Aloha and welcome to Eyes on Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Carol Cox. Today, my guest is Ms. Kathy Gogel, president and founder of Animal Rights Hawaii. We will be talking about the proposed administrative rule change regarding cats at harbors throughout Hawaii. And uh, welcome back. The recent conversations we've had on cats and humane treatment of cats and other animals uh, have been a, something that has been about us for a while. But there's a new problem now, and we're calling this a, uh, I guess, a rally cry or an emergency to alert you, the public, of what is going on and educate you. The Department of Land and Natural Resources is proposing a bill, a change of the administrative rules, uh, and to make it specific, Chapter 13232. Feeding of colonies, strays, wildlife of federal animals, of feral animals prohibited while on any property under the jurisdiction of the division of no person shall feed or deliberately introduce any food material, substance, or attractant directly to or in the vicinity of any colony, stray, wildlife, or feral. And so having said that, we'll touch on the law again, this rule, new rule proposed, and uh, come back to it. But Kathy Gogel, thank you again for joining me. I, it was always a pleasure. My so pleasure. Thank well. you. What is this? Or you want to introduce yourself first, and I'm, I'm anxious to talk about this real, this bill, or this rule change, a proposed rules change. Yes. Well, Carol, Animal Rights Hawaii has been advocating for animals since 1977, and we've covered a broad spectrum of issues from feral pigs to animals in laboratories to livestock and feral cats. And these have come up many, many times. About 20 years ago, there was a proposal by the Department of Health to have a feeding ban throughout the state of Hawaii, period, on all state lands. And it went to administrative rule hearings and people who care about the cats, who want them to be taken care of and to be humanely cared for, mm -hmm. we, we were able to prevail on in that case. But there is a constant movement by people who don't like to see feral cats, don't want to have them around, and we are very, very concerned about the progress that the invasive species committees have been making and this proposed rule would actually cause great hardship for cats. Harbors are a natural place for cats. Mm -hmm. uh, cats originally came to Hawaii on ships. The Vikings were believed to have spread cats throughout northern Europe during their explorations because cats kill rats and mice and they want them to have them on board so almost every ship has a ship's cat so that's how cats got to Hawaii and unfortunately they have thrived and we who care for the cats don't want to see huge quantities of cats what we want is humane population control and that is through trap neuter return and manage. And this is quite possible to maintain that population or eliminate the presence of cats if we had a complete participation from government bodies, from humane bodies, uh, nonprofits, and, and the general public. If we work together as one, uh, I've spoken with a number of uh, cat caretakers and uh, in that process, in speaking with them, they're not claiming to want any cats in, but the fact is that the cats are there. And so they want a humane treatment of these cats, whether it be if you're going to starve them out, because that's just what it will be. You will be mm -hmm. starving them out, which is inhumane. And the population will continue to grow because, let's face it, there are many projects that the state of Department of Land and Natural Resources can't manage and won't manage because it's not a priority. It's about money. My biggest concern here is that, yes, cats do prey on birds. Yes, cats do pose a problem to endangered birds or migratory birds. 
But the problem does not lie with the cats. The problem lies with the management and the administration of these programs and the failure to put money and put these things and participate and incorporate people like your organization. Instead, what I've found and observed is that they demonize you or others that are out there addressing a problem that is upon us now. Not in theory. The reality is people dump. They abandon them. Mm -hmm. uh, they get there. They escape. They're, they're not neutered. They have babies. And in Hawaii, three possible uh, breeding periods in a year because of the tropical Easily. setting. Yes. So to thrust this up on the public, once again, it's always the, the wrong approach. And, and we'll speak about, is it really about saving birds and animals, uh, uh, native species? Because if it is, I have a laundry list of things that they could be doing. If they're going to insist on killing and maiming and just, in, you know, euthanizing animals, let's start with the African canary who competes with other native birds that are found in the area that are escaped cage birds. Let's see an, an aggressive effort to ban any imports of birds or citizens or anything into the state. Let's ban the, the pet shops from carrying certain animals. So I think it's disingenuous on the part of the DLNR to focus on one spot and then it's going to result in we, while sitting back doing nothing, we will condone the inhumane treatment of ca cats and other animals? Well, we, and I, I call myself we because I volunteer at a spay-neuter clinic, are working constantly to try to keep the population under control. And I would like to see the government, the mm -hmm. state government, Department of Agriculture should not allow the importation of intact dogs and cats without a breeder's permit or license. The mm -hmm. people who make money from breeding these animals have fought for many years against having any kind of controls over their activity. They don't, a lot of them don't pay excise taxes and they are contributing to the overpopulation. We also want to see the U.S. military be, become proactive when members PCS out it's very hard for them to take their pets with them. Mm -hmm. We think it, it's, it's, it should be an, a, a rule that the military should uh, take care of transport of companion animals for those families as well. Well, it's, it's like taking a shovel and trying to clear out the ocean. This little effort that they're... There's so many other things that I've, I've pointed out. Uh, let's go back to the Department of Land and Natural Resources who's proposing this. Just recently, give you an example, uh, the, an officer was just promoted to a high level position, but that officer on, on Maui was involved in the illegal use of a helicopter to gather hihivai and other aquatic species to feed people at a wedding. And yet the current uh, administrator, Suzanne Case, failed to do anything upon her arrival in this, which we communicated these things to her, did nothing. So I questioned the motivation. Is it just a ruse? Is it, we know it's not going to be effective because there's so many other things that are competing and consuming uh, or taking on birds or whatever. And many of the birds that you find now are doves. Uh, they're not native birds. Cardinals, Brazilian Cardinals, Northern Cardinals. So I, I question the, the sincerity and the need for this rather than become humane in our approach and be more aggressive. And again, you got to incorporate and quit demonizing the people that are doing something because of the people that are feeding, they're not going out there collecting cats and then introducing them to the wild and having their own little funny farm. It's, it's not happening. No. The, the state legislature just felt this last year apportioned over $4 million for the invasive species committees. And yet the people who are taking care of the feral cat populations, the colonies, are paying for veterinary care, for medications, for food, 
for treatments, they're not getting a penny of government money. And we're not asking for that. We want, we're, we are stakeholders and we want to be considered to be that. We're, we're, I'm, I'm tired of being <laughs> called a little old cat lady because <laughs> little old cat ladies can really get angry when we're pushed yeah. to the edge. Well, there are so many other uh, angles to for approach this and to reduce the take of or the threat of any alien species by we don't need to throw money at them to believe it or not. We need to do things such as this. The Department of Agriculture is a culprit in this whole scheme of things. Uh, they are the ones who determine which animals can come into the state and which cannot. Those people that come on the plane and they voluntarily sign off, uh, but there's nobody there to greet them at the airports. They could be smuggling anything, as I've found in, in years gone by, where one person smuggled a cougar in, smuggled snakes in, in bags, alive snakes, and what have you, aboard the planes. Uh, at one point, you could buy scorpions and spiders and frogs and snakes in pet shops right here in Hawaii. So until the state adopts a stance that it really wants to protect endangered species and the native flora, flora and fauna here, I would say this, there's something amiss here. There's something wrong, and it, I think it's an abusive process. I agree. And one of the subcommittees that advises the Board of Agriculture on whether specific animals could be allowed into the state is the owner of a very large pet shop here. So I think he may have a particular point of view that is not really in the interest of our state and of, of our native animals. Uh, I really I really hope that the public will become active on this. We have until August 5th to respond regarding the uh, proposed administrative rule. And then it will go to the Board of Land and Natural Resources for hearing. And we haven't seen any of the testimony. We haven't seen anything. There has been no transparency on the part of the Department of Land and Natural Resources or DOBOR. Uh, they, at the last hearing, one of, one of the people who were giving testimony asked a question and was told, we're not here to answer questions. Wow. Well, we, we've got so much to finish up with in talking about this, but the last day is August 5th to respond, and you can respond by going to dlnr.harreview at hawaii.gov and offer your comments there. We will be taking a break, and this is Eyes on Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Carol Cox. We will be right back. Welcome back to Eyes on Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Carol Cox. My guest is Ms. Kathy Gogel, president and founder of Animal Rights Hawaii. We're talking about the proposed administrative rule change regarding cats at harbors throughout Hawaii. And Kathy, taking up where we left off, uh, I can only think when I travel to the Big Island, I hear the Koki frog. 
and but much more numerous and, and the loud volume. But they eat bugs and they eat native species and, and what have you. And they compete for, for space from other native species. So here's the question. Why don't we see any aggressive nature on that from the DLNR to ban the import of plants, potted plants or bromeliads or prohibit, uh, create a list, but the state agriculture does not want to create a list because it would create a black list uh, of people that are, have infestation of these frogs. And by the way, that is how it started. They knew where the frogs were. They knew which nursery the frogs existed but they were reluctant to do anything because it would impact business. So why would we stand by and witness them inhumanely treat uh, and euthanize cats that human beings are responsible for putting there? Well, I have to say that I don't agree with you on cokey frogs. <laughs> and I, cokey frogs are loved in their native Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. The sound is, is beloved, and I, I really think that they are not an, an agricultural pest, and I think that killing them with citric acid is a horrible, horrible way to go. And I know that there are problems with the animals like brown tree snakes that I would lo not like to see here coming into Hawaii, but I'd give the cokey frogs. Well, we're, we're not here to issue yeah. death warrants on anyone, and, and, but the point that I was trying to stress is that if we, the reality is from their ilk, from their view and their vantage points, they're saying their motivation for this is because it competes with native species, it consumes native species. So my question is, that's only soliciting the questions, why don't they be as aggressive? Not to say how beautiful the frog sings or what he is in other in his native habitat, but to emphasize there must be something wrong with this system and with this approach that we would uh, be selective enough and be so aggressive in one aspect, but the other things, it's rather telling that I question the veracity or the serious sincerity of this program. Well, I think it's another case of follow the money. The um, environmentalists, once they finish their educations, have to get jobs. And they, a lot of them end up in government. And a lot of them go on living on grants. And the grants are pretty large, pretty large. Oh, yeah. And so it becomes an industry. The killing and disposal of animals that people don't like has become an industry. And not just on the pest control level, mm -hmm. uh, but on the, the level of PhDs who spend a lot of time and a lot of taxpayer money up in the mountains. And we know that they are killing cats as well as other animals. They are not transparent. I have found cat, dead cats in traps all over the state. And ultimately, that's where we're getting around to the humane treatment of these animals. Uh, for example, I contributed to an article in Honolulu Weekly at one time called Hell to Shelter. And uh, just th the whole thing is out of kilt because on one hand, the city and county of Honolulu has a program and sanctions trap, neuter, release. And this, how it's sanctioned is that if you get a cat and you trap it and you participate in the TNR program, you get a microchip. It's microchip to you. You become the, quote, owner of it. So therefore, if it is trapped, it is returned. That is supposed to be the humane way of, uh, through attrition, and uh, eliminating the population or reducing the population of cats. So why then are they going to allow this law? It's going to conflict or contradict what is already written. How can they just automatically? They're not saying we're opposed to TNR. They're saying don't feed them, which means the TNR program, you're going to starve it to death. And for them to require uh, cruelty like that makes them in violation of the state cruelty statute. Mm -hmm. So. It's, it's a conundrum, and I, don't, I just don't see how this, they may be trying to ram it 
down our throats, but it's wrong, mm -hmm. and we need, we have a problem, we need to seek a humane alternative to, to killing. On a scale of one to ten, how transparent do you think the DLNR, the Department of Land and Natural Resources, has been with this effort? Oh, maybe a one. Mm -hmm. I, uh, we haven't seen anything. And you, you won't be privy to the uh, testimonies or yet, are you? No. The public is not of it. And no. then, so the process is going to be, they are going to sit and hold the hearings as they have already. Mm -hmm. They're going to take that information with, and then not share the results of the meetings or the testimonies with people like yourself or me or other interested parties. And then go ahead and go to the land board, the Department of Land and Natural Resources, mm -hmm. and leave it up to them to vote for this? Yes, precisely. And we will have a six days notice when it is planned. And hopefully we can get a hold of the agenda and the submittal mm -hmm. in, in, in a timely manner. The, the government agencies have a long history of trying to complete what they want to do without too much input from outsiders because it's so inconvenient for them. So with the open meetings law, with the Sunshine Law, Uniform Information Practices Act, we do have supposed access, but there are many times that things do not get posted in a timely manner. I, I have a concern that, that in an observation, and that maybe Suzanne Case, if she would ever uh, lend herself to communicating or conversing with me on this show, I'd invite her. And, and that is, I believe that the board is one-sided. It's influenced by, well, she's formerly the Nature Conservancy. Yes. And then there's another member on the board, and, and nothing to say uh, to impugn their integrity, but as a public body, I have concerns with that and how this is being introduced to the public. It's all, I won't call it force-fed. It's more of a sheepish way of uh, feeding the people tidbits and then later return to the table and say, well, here's a finished product. You shall not do this. And the fines, $50 or uh, $1,000 or in prison. That's cruel and un inhumane in itself to a person. You just abruptly sever all the relationships with this practice that you've been doing. Well, I, I, I have been upset for a, a very long time with the lack of transparency by both the Board of Land and Natural Resources and the Board of Agriculture, which are the two major agencies that I deal with in advocating for animals. And, but that goes to the larger issue of open government and participation of the public. It's very hard to participate in government unless you really try. It's, it, things are not just put out there. Phone calls, phone calls, phone calls. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Who do you represent? You know, the, that what is supposed to be public information, they want to know who you are and why you want to know this information. I have a question for you. Sorry to disturb you. Have uh, you been contacted or any outreach on, on the part of DLNR, Suzanne Case, or anyone? You being Animal Rights Hawaii, you've been quite active in the, in the community here for years, as you've shown us. Have you had any outreach from that entity to speak with you, to ask you your consideration, your membership, or anything? No, not, not a one. So are you an enemy of the state, or what? <laughs> 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 well, when people ask, when, they, when I call and ask a question, they say, well, who, who are you with? And I say, well, I'm just a taxpayer, yeah. and that should be enough.
Right. Or a concerned citizen because lack of transparency, the inhumane. Our government should not be involved in any act that is humane, inhumane and any act that is conflicting with that's something that's in place to, that resembles humane treatment of animals or anything or people. But then I, I, I'm afraid to say currently what we see now with the way we heard human beings, the homeless people and the unfortunate ones, you know, it bothered me. So I'm, I'm thinking we're dealing with a different entity now with that going to rely on the uh, cruel and unusual practices of starving people, the cats, to death. And then that brings on big questions, diseases. And I'm not offering this to, as a defense or uh, to try and distort the truth. The reality is I've been out there on the ground. I know I'm a conservationist, I'm an environmentalist, and I just don't, I'm not the part of the groupie conservationist. I have the same concerns. So we've got about one minute left and anything in closing? Well, I hope that people will start to participate in the process of government. Administrative rules have to go to public hearings and they're held on all the islands and it is a way for the public to get involved. And when legislative session starts up in the beginning of next year, people should go to their, uh, they have a, a room on the fourth floor, public access room where you can learn how to participate in government. And I think that's, that's a really good way to go. Mm -hmm. Well, Kathy Gogel, thank you for joining me on Hawaii Think Tech and Eyes on Hawaii. I appreciate it. And for you, the viewers out there, please write the, this address down, D-L-N-R dot H-A-R-R-E-V-I-E-W at Hawaii dot gov and offer your comments, and if you care to ask the government to hold off on this and do not pass such a, a rule change or approve it, uh, that will be thank, uh, good for you and good for us. So it will make us all feel good. And that's about uh, it. If you're interested in getting on our mailing list, go to thinktechhawaii.com. Thank you for joining me today on Eyes on Hawaii, on Think Tech Hawaii. Thanks to Jay Fidel, our executive director, our technical support team, Robert McLean, Ray Sangalan, and Nick Sexton. I'll see you again in two weeks. I'm Carol Cox. Aloha.